I would like my son, my daughter, to really know what a rhino looks like. This is what we are fighting for. The last 11 months, zero poaching months. 80% of our rhinos are in floodplains. A large number of Indians being injured and being killed. It's absolutely essential that we figure out safe passage for wildlife. Manas is a protected tiger reserve almost 300 kilometers from here and is now the backup plan for Kaziranga's precious rhino population. It's truly a complicated and fragile situation. And although it's great to know there's another option for the rhinos, I still want to see what can be done to save the beauty of Kaziranga. It's quite surreal to see this place in a different season, in three to four months' time, completely underwater. The annual flooding here intensifies the human-animal conflict in Kaziranga. And to understand the challenge before me, I'm meeting Kriti Karanth, a famous Indian National Geographic explorer. You are one of India's connoisseurs in conservation. I fell in love with animals when I was a little girl. I got to see tigers by the time I was two. I don't think India should settle for 5% of land being protected. They've only got 5%? Yes, compared to, you know, 15% in US and China and a lot more in South America and Africa. The flooding has become a more serious problem over time. Something that used to happen once in 10 years now happens every other year. And when you have all these other problems to solve as well, this just adds on and makes it more difficult. Krithi is involved in efforts pioneering the possibilities that humans and animals can live together. India is a very high conflict country. So you have a number of Indians losing crops, losing livestock, being injured and being killed in confrontations. And we really need to get to a lot of people very quickly and help them kind of cope with the conflict so they don't retaliate, poison and injure animals. The big difference between Africa and India is these very small parks surrounded by extremely high densities of people living right yeah, on the like edge, this. like this, and we don't have fences, right? Yeah. That's when you see people coming into direct contact with wildlife. Most of the time, nothing happening, but when it does, it can go horribly wrong. My mission is to create balance between people and wildlife and really solving the human side of the issues, what is going to allow us to save animals. We have about 100,000 incidents of crop loss, property damage, human injury, human death, and livestock predation being reported to the government for which compensation is paid. But we've also found that less than 30% of people are filing for compensation. And that's what your NGO does, right? It helps them work with the government and handle that filing? Yeah, so we filed 16,000 claims and people have received an estimated 600,000 US dollars in compensation from the government. Do you think that there's a role in technology that can help here? Absolutely, and for us to scale and solve these problems for millions of people and thousands of animals, something that's designed for a mobile device is not hard to maintain. So we took a lot of the ideas out of the hackathon and we did come up with an app for phones that this village and the guards and others can use, and also tie in your NGO. It's the app with the symbol of the rhino on it. When I want to put it in a report, yep. we can have damage claim, damage claim yep. spotting, mm -hmm. or an animal at risk. Mm -hmm. It's all shared and updated in real time and distributed to everybody that needs it. So when a farmer goes through the whole process to submit a damage claim, it goes directly to create these NGO. When a farmer or community member sees an animal at risk, the park guards can be alerted immediately. It actually alerts homeowners near the location of the animal and the direction that the animal's going. Every farmer can get the status of their reports and claims and talk directly with park officials. Dave showed me the app and I actually got such a 
incredibly emotional feeling because that app can change conservation. That app can assist in the human wildlife problem. Absolutely, absolutely, no doubt about it. It can add a dimension of love and appreciation of their wildlife. And the excitement and of the just excitement seeing of something. Seeing something. Yeah. And just getting people to buy into why these species matter, why these parks matter. Right? Yeah. And, and when you start to care is when you're going to act to save these places. What they did was something quite phenomenal. I think this makes it a solution for the world because India is sort of on the edge in terms of solving the densities of people, the pressures on the land and large charismatic megafauna like rhinos and tigers and elephants living with these people. I'm kind of seeing a trend where many, many other countries around the world are going to get to this point. And if we've solved the issue here, it's something that can be modified and adapted but doesn't have to be created from scratch. Oh, the runners are here, they're sleeping, look at them. Morning, big guy. Oh my goodness, how cool is that? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful.